Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're taking a look at the OpenStick Firmware Reference Design, or OSFRD. It's a vice stick powered by the Raspberry Pi. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, I was sent this buttons only fight stick to take a look at and to provide my feedback on. Now this is just a prototype unit, so this will not be the final build of the product. The final product will look a little bit different than what I have here. And in that spirit, this review isn't necessarily a final verdict on this device because that really wouldn't be fair. This is just a prototype. They're experimenting with things and I was just excited to show everyone. So right away we can see that this is a hitbox style layout. We have our left, down, right, and up, and we have our action buttons over here. On the top we have six different buttons. We have start, select, home, touchpad, L3, and R3. Now this is currently compatible with the PC, with Android, uh, Raspberry Pi, PS3, and PS4 and Legacy Controller support mode, I think, uh, as well as the Nintendo Switch. It's being powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico. Rounding out the top of the board, we have player indicator lights right here, so first, second, third, and fourth player. Uh, we also have ports here for auxiliary buttons if you wanted to map those. And we have some pins here, and now this thing can directly attach to a brook board, if you wanted to use the Brook board as the brains for it instead of the Raspberry Pi Pico, that would get you access to a few more systems in terms of compatibility. It does use micro USB and that's because that's what's built into the Pico. On the back of this, we've got some kale hot swap switches and also a wire that's been soldered uh, from the home button to the Pico. Now, I don't necessarily think that there will be a wire on the final build of this. This is to me one of the clear indicators that this is a prototype. Uh, but I've seen stranger things here, so I don't necessarily like seeing that if this is a final build, but on a prototype, I think that's absolutely okay. One of the benefits of having hot swap switches is that you can just pull them out and change them up as you see fit. Uh, so this was shipped to me with clear keycaps here, and these switches are kale box switches. I don't know if these will be in the final build, but this is what's in this stick. Now, if I wanted to switch it out for something like a kale silver switch, I absolutely can. On the back, they have the same pin pattern, so it is just plug and play. Uh, but if I wanted to change it up for something like a low profile switch here, I can't, and that's because the pin pattern is different. So just bear in mind, if you are picking one of these up and wanna change the switches out, make sure that the pin pattern is the same. And fun fact here, the keycap provided actually fits on this silver kale switch. So that's exactly what I'm gonna use. I'll just put it on the switch. I'm gonna move this switch up here, and I'm gonna put the kale switch on the very bottom. Also be careful when you're replacing switches that you don't accidentally bend the pins. As I mentioned earlier, these are the pins that connect the OSFRD to a Brook board. Now this is completely optional, but you can see the pins on the Brook board that match up to the pins on the OSFRD, and you use a cable to connect the two. So here's everything hooked up, and yes, this is not pretty at all, and yes, there are some issues. So the first issue here is actually with the connector. It does get in the way of my button presses because it is raised up quite a bit. You can see when I press the buttons down, it's actually sitting above the buttons. The second thing here is my palm hits this cable as well as the Brook board. While it is cool that it plugs into a Brook board and it does work very well, it's not a very practical or feasible setup. On top of that, I made a huge mistake here. I wasn't paying attention when I plugged this thing in and I had the Brook board flipped around the other way. And this resulted in a shorts. When I had this thing plugged in, uh, the Pico immediately started heating up. I smelled burning and I thought I fried the device. Thankfully, I didn't. Uh, now, this was mainly just user error because I wasn't paying attention. But at the same time here, it would have been nice to see a connector that was uh, done in a certain way that I couldn't make this mistake. And from my understanding, they will be moving this to the bottom of the board for future iterations of the product, which is awesome. The only other thing I'd say is maybe make different connectors here so that this board can directly plug into the Brook board without having to use one of these cables. That'd be pretty awesome. And in that same vein, I actually wouldn't mind seeing the Pico mounted to the bottom of this board as well. That might actually allow for someone to place some artwork on here without having to worry about this piece. Now the case for this OSFRD are two pieces of plexiglass that sandwiches the main PCB. Now these aren't thin pieces of plexiglass, but at the same time, they're not supported in the right areas. Uh, for example, on this bottom corner here, there is no support whatsoever, and you can very easily bend this and probably very easily break it. On top of that, on the top right corner here, well, it's not supported very well either. And you can see what happens when you squeeze down on it. Some of the buttons just kind of fly out. And that is not a very good thing. 
On top of that, uh, right here by the Raspberry Pi Pico, the plexiglass actually hits the main PCB. And that could also result in accidental damage. So you can see just by flexing this thing, I've knocked out three different buttons. In all fairness though, just remember this is just a prototype. And also the approach they're taking here is kind of like a Raspberry Pi, where they provide you the base and maybe a few extras based on the package you want, but it's really up to you on what you want to do with it and how you want to use it. Uh, for example here, one of the things I'd be looking at is maybe redesigning a different case or uh, maybe adding some supports around the edges just so it didn't really flex. Now the buttons on the top here, I'm not the biggest fan of. They have a nice selection of buttons, uh, but at the same time, they're not really confidence inspiring. They wiggle around quite a bit. They're not very stable at all. That is partially because of the micro switches they chose, but also partially because this case is entirely open. So I wouldn't mind seeing a case with maybe supports for these buttons in some way, shape or form. Uh, because this is a little unsettling. If you are curious about size, here is the OSFRD beside the Snackbox Micro and beside the Versus Fighter. It's not very big at all. It's smaller than the Micro by a considerable margin. And it's also narrower than the Versus Fighter, but it is thicker than both the Versus Fighter and the Snackbox Micro. One of the cool features about the OSFRD is the fact that it has LEDs on each button and they are configurable. So by default, they are turned on. I've turned them off and you can change this if you want. Uh, I've turned the lights off in this room just to give you an idea of how bright these things are. They get extremely bright. My camera is not doing them justice. So here's Ultra Street Fighter 2 up and running on the Nintendo Switch and the fight stick is plugged in and working absolutely wonderfully. It is a very fast fight stick. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of delay here. Uh, they do say it's, I think it's one millisecond worth of delay based on the actual GitHub page. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But overall, this is very similar to the Versus Fighter in terms of quickness. It's a very fast stick. Now, one of the benefits to the OSFRD is the fact that the software on this is open source. I'll leave a link to this page in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. If you pick up an OSFRD, the software on this thing is constantly improving. Things are changing and new features are being added. Uh, so right now there is a list on here. You can see what systems this is compatible with. It also has SOCD cleaning. Uh, you can see the performance on this as well, and the performance on this is incredible. In fact, it's arguably one of the fastest fight sticks you can get on the market. And just like the Versus Fighter, this also has button combinations to change up different modes. You can change up the D-pad mode if you want. You can change up SOCD modes on the fly. Now, as for the price of one of these, I don't know the price for the final product, but the price for the prototype is sitting at $60. To me, that is one heck of a deal for what you get in return. I'm assuming the price for the final product might be a little bit more expensive, but even if it's in this ballpark, it's still a pretty good deal. Overall here, this prototype isn't perfect. I mean, I've pointed out some issues and looking at it right now, I also think some people might not like where this micro USB port is located. Uh, but overall, I am absolutely in love with this initiative. I think they have something really cool here. I mean, if they take a DIY approach like the Raspberry Pi does, and this is powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico, the do-it-yourself community might really appreciate something like this. If you can just order the board on its own and then maybe supply your own micro switches, your own keycaps, and your own case, well, you might have a really inexpensive option for your own fight stick, provided the price is right. I am extremely excited about the OSFRD and I can't wait to see the final product. Just remember, this is a prototype. The final product will probably be quite a bit different. Anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Huge shout out to Sleep Unit for providing this to me for a fair and honest assessment. Let me know your thoughts about the OSFRD prototype in the comments below. If you have any questions about it or have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. There's a chance that the creator of this thing might actually be reading those comments. And who knows, maybe a suggestion makes it into the final product. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit the subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.